Uh, you heard uh, a few minutes ago from Brian about uh, uh, HUD's great work uh, that they're doing. Let me tell you a little bit about transportation, and you can see how these things start to fit together. Uh, the first thing I'd like to mention is our TIGER program. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's a, it's a merit-based grant program. As opposed to earmarks, these are uh, projects of regional and national significance uh, throughout the nation. We had our first round of TIGER applications last year, and we received almost 1,500 applications, $60 billion worth of requests for $1.5 billion in funding. So obviously not every community received funding, but so far we awarded 51 grants. One of those 51 grants was the project I just told you about in Dubuque. Why? Uh, because it helped cement together, literally, the concept of livability uh, for the city of Dubuque. It's a great example, I think, of how we can put those priorities and values that we share into action. And you can expect uh, more of that from us, and in, in four key areas in particular. Um, first, building on that success, uh, working with our uh, sister agencies, uh, DOT and HUD are teaming up together for the next round of TIGER grants. And if you think about uh, how different this is as a way of doing business, these are transportation grants where the evaluation team includes our HUD partners, it includes the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, we're trying to look holistically at how transportation can actually make a difference. Uh, the way it works, uh, in the challenge grants that we have uh, uh, with HUD is that up to $35 million in planning grants will be made available. These are ways to build capacity in the community and come together in a common vision. So they're used for planning, preparing, uh, designing uh, surface transportation projects uh, to prepare for the next round of uh, TIGER grants. And, and through HUD, up to $40 million will be, able, will be available through community challenge planning grants for localized planning, like transit station area planning, uh, like zoning uh, code uh, and land banking. That kind of coordination among the departments uh, is not a cure-all. What it does is, is enable us to help communities that have their act together. It encourages and rewards areas that plan more innovative projects, uh, and it's consistent with President Obama's commitment to remove these kind of artificial barriers between federal programs that, that impede uh, development and redevelopment at the local level. Uh, the second thing I'd like to mention that's very different uh, is how we think about transit funding, capital transit funding, building new transit lines, for example. Uh, one of the new tools we have in our toolkit uh, is uh, not readily visible to most of our citizens, but very important. Um, what we've done is, is, is reestablished a broader criteria for what we call the New Starts Transit Projects. Um, what happened over the last uh, seven or eight years is that transit projects were evaluated for federal funding simply and solely on the basis of cost effectiveness. Cost effectiveness, in turn, was defined as getting from the suburbs to the center city as quickly as possible. That, mean, that meant, by the way, leaving out as many stops as possible in between. So the less you served your community, the more likely you were to get federal funding. Uh, obviously, that's not a smart way to do it. Uh, so uh, what we have done, uh, and it has taken support from the highest levels of the administration to do this, is establish a broader criteria for where federal transit dollars should go. And it's things like environmental benefits, cost effectiveness still, but land use considerations, community land use plans, mobility improvements, economic development, now what those criteria really mean is for communities that have come to a consensus on what they want to do and how they want to get there, they will fare very well in transit funding. Uh, it's no longer kind of a race to the bottom to see how little service you can provide for a given dollar. It's a more holistic approach uh, looking at how you can best make transit an integral part of a community uh, that truly serves its citizens. So uh, I would put that in the extraordinary opportunity category. Um, third thing I'd like to mention uh, is President Obama signed an executive order on sustainable building. Um, and part of that is leading by example. Um, part of the order uh, on sustainability uh, required the Department of Transportation to develop recommendations for sustainable location of federal facilities. So we actually have to walk the walk, not talk the talk. 
Uh, we have set, put together a comprehensive set of recommendations on where federal facilities should be sited in the future. Uh, those have been sent to the Council on Environmental Quality. Uh, and for the first time, I'm confident that, that they'll be adopted, for the first time, this will direct federal agencies to think about the impacts on the communities, positive and negative, uh, of where they're locating. So gone are the days when a mammoth federal uh, facility will be located on the outskirts of town somewhere uh, where it's served only uh, by um, uh, highway, highways. Um, the criteria will give uh, emphasis on things like transit access, affordable housing, uh, reuse of historic structures, infill development, green space preservation. So we've worked with uh, our other federal partners, with private groups like the Urban Land Institute to make sure uh, that, that this location of federal facilities can actually be a tool for redevelopment of communities throughout the United States. Um, the uh, next thing I'd like to mention uh, is high-speed passenger rail. And uh, I started by talking about uh, batteries for hybrid vehicles. One of the other things in the Recovery Act uh, that stimulus dollars have been used for is to reestablish high-speed rail in America. Now, I say reestablish because our grandparents had high-speed rail. We somehow lost it. Um, uh, President Obama and Congress have awarded over $10 billion uh, for high-speed rail work, uh, starting with $8 billion in the stimulus bill. What we want to do, quite simply, is reimagine and reestablish high-speed passenger rail links between cities, uh, towns, uh, and, and major urban centers in America. Uh, if you think about what we've done over the last 100 years, uh, large cities, medium-sized cities, small towns, most all of them had a train station. Those train stations were the center of town. They were cathedrals, in some cases, architecturally. We replaced them over the years with double-wide trailers. What we're going to do is get back to a true high-speed rail network that truly serves our population city center to city center, and that in turn feeds the rest of the transportation system. I, I wouldn't put any of these ideas uh, under the, the, the banner of rocket science. I think they're common sense writ large. Uh, but what we are trying to do is get back to some of the common sense principles that built this country as we try to rebuild this country. Um, I will tell you also uh, on high-speed rail that this fall, the Federal Railroad Administration will have a national rail plan. We've never had one before uh, for that high-speed rail vision. Uh, please make sure you're part of that process and, and you're part of it. Uh, one other piece of high-speed rail I'd also like to mention uh, and that's the American manufacturing component of it. Um, we think that we can rebuild an industry that America had and lost. And what we are asking the manufacturers to do is if you're going to get U.S. tax dollars, if you're going to get our hard-earned taxpayers' dollars, those jobs are going to be here in America. It, and just so you know our strategy, we're not just talking about final assembly. We're talking about the wheel bearings, the wheels, the paint, the rails, everything. So uh, let me just uh, wrap up quickly by uh, saying there is a larger vision. That vision is that transportation should be serving you rather than the other way around. Uh, you have a president, a vice president, and a secretary that are absolutely committed to that concept. And you're seeing throughout the country, I have the pleasure of seeing it every day, uh, that, that there are regions coming together and collaborating, coming past and overcoming past differences and saying, hey, we sink or swim together. We have a common future we can build together. Those are the regions that are going to prosper. Those are the regions that we will be able to help. And we're going to do that uh, together with our sister agencies. We, uh, transportation will be an enabler. Uh, it will be a means, not an end. So with that, thank you very much. Please keep up the energy.